<laughs> this is gonna be funny. Hey guys, Jason here out in front of the shop back working on the Extreme Flight Yak 54 with the DA60. Um, had a couple requests for a video on throttle servo setup, so we're going to be covering that today. Um, throttle servo setup seems like something that would be pretty straightforward, pretty easy, but there's actually a few things you really need to pay attention to. Uh, the most important is geometry. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, basically what geometry is, is your uh, push rod to servo arm orientation. Uh, whenever you're pushing a surface, you want all connections to be perfectly perpendicular. And the reason for this is if you're look, looking at my finger here, when I'm centered like this and everything's perpendicular and I move, let's say that's 10 to 15 degrees, you can see my left hand here is having to move quite a bit. Most of that movement is moving that finger. If we come way over here and we move that same 10 to 15 degrees, my hand's not moving that direction. The push rod wouldn't be moving that direction as much. So you lose resolution and you lose control. So you want things centered so that your control is linear, both in when you go positive or when you go negative. And in throttle, that's very important. So let's uh, go ahead and start talking about what we've done here. The first thing you want to do is you want to figure out about the length of arm you have on your carburetor. On this DA60, it's about, I would say, 5 eighths of an inch. Uh, maybe a little longer, maybe closer to three quarters. So we picked an arm that's a, uh, a JR arm. I'm using a JR uh, 821 HV servo on this because I'm going to be running high voltage on everything. I picked an arm that's about the same length. I went to the third hole out on that and we'll see this in a minute. I drilled it to size and I tapped it using the 440 screw for the turnbuckle I'm using and, and got it all ready to go so that my arms are both about the same. You want about a one to one on throttle. So let's go ahead and uh, dive in. I'll, I'm going to set up the GoPro with an over the top view here so you can see what I'm talking about as we're doing it. All right, so the first thing we want to do here, guys, you see we have our push rod. This is already connected to the carburetor. I connected it, Loctite, everything before mounting the engine. Uh, I looked at the way I wanted to orient or uh, orientate the servo, the orientation I wanted the servo in, we'll say, and I'm going to end up with it in this direction with the arm coming backwards like this. One nice thing about this extreme flight is that the servo sideways. So one thing that that made really simple is trying the center of the spline on the output of the servo is going to be the center of this this hole. So what I did is I set my servo or my push rod length so that that's all the way closed and that's all the way open and it's even it lines up with the edges of the servo. So I know it's traveling a similar amount in both directions. So that was step one, okay? So step two is gonna to be to mount your servo. We've covered this on a few of our other videos already, I know, but we're gonna go ahead and do it here. Let me grab my Dremel. Step one is to make sure the servo is centered. And go ahead and drill these holes through the grommets. I'm gonna keep it centered. So what I like to do is get one drilled and get the screw put in so I can keep the servo in place easily. Go ahead and run this in. This cuts the thread into the plywood. You can go ahead and square the servo up. Get it nice and tight there. Back off just a little bit. There we go. Now we've got it mounted well. Now we're going to drill the other holes just using our finger to keep it still. Okay, next step is to take this one screw we have in out. We've talked about this before. You want to make sure you harden these threads with these big gas engines. We get a lot of vibration and it'll pull the threads right out of the wood if you don't harden them. So what we do is we use our screw. These are uh, screws from Micro Fasteners. There's number two uh, threaded Allen head screws, wood screws. Let's see if we can put a link in the description for you below. And go ahead and run it into every hole here. Just got to go through the bottom. You don't have to go all the way through to tighten. You just got to make sure you're getting threads all the way through the piece of plywood. Okay. We already did the one on the bottom right, my bottom right. 
so we don't have to run that one through again. Take that out. Be careful, this screw will get warm from the friction from running that in and out. Blow off our dust. And the final step is to put a couple drops of our Bob Smith Industries Thin CA in here to harden up those threads. And this will make your threads last the life of the plane easily. Now we're going to go ahead and final mount our servo with the orientation the way we talked about before. I find by doing this before everything dries, it uh, helps kind of lock the screws in. Either way, the, the tolerances are tightened up when you put that, that uh, glue on there. So it's going to kind of work as a th uh, Loctite, especially since we're in wood. But I, I don't wait for the glue to cure before running the screws in for the final mounting. Another thing I'll mention here, guys, is in every one of our videos, in the in the description below, there's always links to different tools we use or different things we're featuring in the video. And one thing that's always in there is these MIP drivers. These are by, fest, by far the best drivers you can buy. Uh, they don't wear out. They're made of a, a high uh, quality uh, drill bit steel, and they just last forever. I have one uh, driver that's a ball driver that's over 20 years old, and it's still like brand new. So. Be sure to check that out, click on the link, uh, and uh, buy the, the tools that we, we prefer to use. So now that our servo is mounted and in place, we're going to go ahead and remove the screw for the servo arm. We're going to use our JR Matchmaker that we've used in videos in the past that I love for setting up videos. It just works great. We're going to hook up our, any servo driver, driver will work by the way guys. Go ahead and use our driver here to center this servo. There's the detent for the center. Put that aside. Actually, we'll set it up here so we're not putting pressure on our cable. And then we're going to place the arm as close to centered as possible. So that's going to be the spot right there. Now, by doing this and putting it as close to center as possible, it's going to make it so we don't have to use as much sub trim when we're setting up our radio. Even though the servo is plugged in and can hold itself, I like to kind of give it a little help with that arm so we don't strip anything out. And next we're going to take our screw. We're going to run it through our push rod here. And then we're going to run it through our servo arm. Just like all the other servos guys, all the other surfaces, the nice thing about this is now this servo is centered. I don't have to do anything with it until I'm at the airfield ready to fly this airplane. And when we do the first fire up, we'll do the sub trim and she'll be ready for, the, for flight. Just like all the control servers, like the ailerons, the elevators, everything along those lines. That should be full travel one way, full travel the other way. Now, the next tip is this, guys. When you're setting up your radio, when you get out to the field, first thing you want to do is you want to take your throttle endpoints and put it at about 50 in each direction for the low and the high endpoint. This way, you don't over travel the, the servo. You don't over travel and, and hit the stops on the carburetor because if you can do that, you'll burn these servos up really quickly. So what you want to do is set it down to 50 or, or lower, 
turn everything on, make sure everything's going the right direction, go to full throttle, and then adjust your endpoint until it hits the end. You'll hear the servo start to, to uh, whine a little bit or buzz a little bit more when it hits that endpoint. Then do the same thing for low with the trim all the way down, go to the low endpoint and up the endpoint until it hits the end there, and then you know you're good. Then you go to center trim, and then you find out where your uh, where your idle trim will be and you'll have to mess with that endpoint a little bit more just once the engine's running and you'll be set. So that's it guys, setting up your throttle servo is that easy, that quick. Um, be sure to click links below for anything we've used that helps the channel out guys. Also check out, uh, John's been digging through the archives, we've, been, we've started a throwback Thursday. Uh, we're trying to do it every Thursday. I think he's found something like 30 videos that we've done in the past. We've been doing this for a long time guys and uh, we think there's some Hopefully some hidden gems, some stuff you guys will, uh, can pick out from that that you can learn from. And then uh, I'm going to try and keep up with the Tech Tuesday stuff to get the new planes going. And then hopefully sooner or later we'll get off this lockdown and we can get out and do some actual flying for you guys. So hope this helped. Leave some comments in the description or leave comments in the section below. Let us know what you think, what else you want to see. And if you have some other advice for on how you set up your throttle servos, we'd love to hear it. Thanks a lot, guys.